Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Minecraft Disney Q&A. If you're new to the series, this is the series in which you guys ask me all manner of questions regarding Disney, whether it's um, the books, the movies, the rides, you name it, and I try to give you answers to the best of my ability. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. We're still here on MC Magic as we usually are, but instead of walking around the parks, we're going to be trying out uh, the parkour. It's been like sort of tradition that on MC Magic there's always a warp for parkour and here it's backstage behind Splash Mountain. Um, as you can see everybody's moving in a sort of very laggy way and that's actually the sweet sweet double-edged uh, sword of success. Uh, Ant Venom just recently made a video uh, showcasing MC Magic so they've been hit with a lot of new visitors and as a result the server is running a little slow but that shouldn't uh, get in the way of doing some parkour here. So we're gonna hop right into it. I've got a bunch of great questions this week so let's jump right in and start answering them. And it's going to most definitely affect my parkour abilities. Anyway, first question comes from Oisin MC, who asks, Hey Rob, just wondering, since Song of the South was taken off the market, do you think they should make a new modern cartoon for Splash Mountain? This question really jumped out to me because it's quite an interesting idea. Now, I'm not sure if you mean like re-theming Splash Mountain to a new cartoon, or if you mean taking the characters from Song of the South and making a new cartoon that could match up with Splash Mountain. Um, uh, here's the thing, I don't think they are going to do either. Um, and as much as I love the idea, I like really think it's a creative solution because Song of the South, as you know, is no longer something that you can buy. And that's because it was made a long time ago and it was not a very politically correct film. And so it gets a lot of heat for that. Uh, but you know, the ride Splash Mountain was themed off of that. So uh, what do you do with it is a great question. The problem is if you take those characters and you make a new animation that you could do for Splash Mountain, then the media story becomes, oh, they changed it because Song of the South was racist. And if you replace all of those characters with new characters from a new animation, then the media story becomes, oh, they replaced those old characters because Song of the South was racist. In Disney's eyes, either way, the media story is going to be putting focus on Song of the South and why it's controversial. And I think that's something Disney doesn't want to do. And on top of that, they're probably going to end up you know, drawing a lot of anger from fans who want Splash Mountain to sort of stay true to what it is. So while I think that's a very creative way to work around a problem, I don't think you're going to see Disney doing it anytime soon. By the way, uh, I apologize to everyone in this episode who's going to get frustrated watching me be really bad at parkour. Uh, between the lag and having to answer questions, it's very tough. Okay, next question comes from AJ Acosta, who asks... Rob, you always talk about rides turning into movies. What would you want to see out of an Expedition Everest movie? I really like this question. This question stood out to me because my initial answer was going to be like very samey. It was going to be sort of like uh, something humorous and lighthearted and animated maybe. And um, I wanted to challenge myself to do something different. So here's what I would want to see out of an Expedition Everest movie. I would want to see it live action, but I would want it. I would want to see it as a love letter to the action the live action disney films of the 60s like very old school hollywood style adventure film about i don't know some crew on an expedition up everest to find like some uh mythological yeti and i think it'd be very interesting if you did it like as a very stylized throwback to the 1960s we haven't seen a lot of that i think you saw you know if you're an older Robert Rodriguez sort of did Grindhouse to bring back like really B-rated movie horror films. Uh, but we've never seen something like that for like the studio films of, of the 50s and 60s. So I would really like to see that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Our next question comes from Goofy Gamer who says, Do you think Disney World would be popular if Universal never took Oswald and they kept him? And if there was never a Mickey Mouse and just Oswald's? Um... So if you don't know the story behind that, Walt Disney, I can't believe I missed that. Walt Disney um, created this character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, and it was to sell to Universal because Universal was looking for a cartoon. This was after he did the Alice uh, comedies, and it was doing really well, and he was doing Oswald for a while, and that was just his thing. At this point, Mickey Mouse didn't exist. And he. the famous story is that he... 
uh, went to New York to negotiate a better contract for him and his animators because he saw how popular these Oddworld cartoons were doing. And what he ended up getting was basically pushed out. Uh, he was fired. The uh, I want to say his name was Charles Mintz was the sort of the guy behind the business end of Oswald. He was uh, of the mind that, you know, what was popular wasn't Walt's ability to tell stories. It was Oswald, the character. So they didn't need uh, Walt. They could save money by getting cheaper animators and force him out and just keep Oswald. And so that's what they sort of did. And so Walt lost Oswald. And on the train ride home is when the, the story goes that he created the idea of Mickey Mouse, or it was Mortimer Mouse at that point. Um, so it's almost like I missed that jump on purpose. So he was sort of forced to come up with this new character, and of course we all know the history of that. Mickey was wildly popular. Uh, it started the Walt Disney Company. That experience taught Walt that he should never give up creative control, and that's how he was able to maintain the Walt Disney Company and do what he did. So to go back to your question, do I think uh, Walt would be as popular if that never happened? No, I don't. I think he would have continued to make Oswald for however many years it would have been popular, and that would have gone on, and then he would have moved on to something else, and he wouldn't have had the Disney franchise to sort of fund idea after idea, and we would never have had most of this. We wouldn't have Disney World or any of that stuff. It would have been very, very different, which is why it's very important. One of my favorite Disney quotes, and of course I don't know it verbatim now, is that it's it's always good for somebody to fail at one point in their life because it is a great learning opportunity. And this was Walt's turn to fail. He had not, you know, been wise as far as business goes. I think I can't jump because I'm I need to eat. So let's go to Starlight. Yep. Uh, he learned from that experience. And look what it brought us. It brought us the Disney company and everything that it came out of his, his genius mind. Uh, but great question. I like playing what if in that sense. Lynn Ashley Ward asks, Hey Rob, do you think there, what do you think are the best and worst jobs at Disney World? Thank you. Have a great day. So now I could answer this in a very superficial way and say like, monorail's the best or, you know, janitor's the worst. But the reason why I actually took on this question is because... Whoops, let's go back to parkour. The, the real answer is it depends on you. You, how, what you approach a job with is really going to affect so much as uh, how it's, pff, let me try that again. Uh, you know, what you put into a job is what you're going to get out of a job. I've read Q and A's from janitors at Walt Disney World who said they love their job and have a lot of fun. And I've seen, you know, people with like very prestigious jobs who hate them because they don't really approach it with a great attitude. So it really is what you put into it. So in that respect, I don't think there is like a best and a worst, you know? It's really about what you make of it. And the reason why I wanted to answer this question is because I want to make sure, you know, everybody knows that. That's sort of what my sign off every week is, is, you know, whatever you do, make the most of it, because that does affect so much how that experience plays out. Um, if you approach a situation with misery, it's going to be a miserable experience. But, you know, I've been in jobs and uh, situations where it was like really miserable and it was you know the world against you but if you approach it with a great attitude you know it makes it a better experience so and I also bring that up because this time of year a lot of you are heading back to school so it's a good mentality to bring to school because it applies there as well you know you're gonna have to go to school five days a week anyway you might as well make the most of it because it will make it that much better uh, next question comes from Ginger Garcia who asks uh, I was curious about the new area in Hollywood, the frozen area in Hollywood. Do you think this will be a permanent area or not? Also, do you think Disney will make an attraction based on Frozen? Um, so attraction, I would not be surprised if they made one down the line. There are all these rumors about Norway. Those haven't been made official yet, so that's not an actual thing that's happening, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Um, I don't think the frozen area in Hollywood Studios is going to be permanent. I think they need to come up with a long-term plan for Frozen to see how long it'll last. Uh, and on top of that, I think financially and just in terms of manpower, they're going to be tied up in the near future doing Star Wars stuff for uh, Hollywood Studios. So I don't. I think they could just depend on Frozen being a box office success. Oh, I can't believe I jumped over that. Let's head over to a park and walk around. Um, so yeah, I don't think it'll be permanent. Brayden... 
Burbeak. Burback. Sorry. It says Disney Infinity is adding characters to the toy box, such as Stitch, Tinkerbell, Aladdin, Jasmine, and Donald Duck. What characters would you like to see added to the toy box? Good question. I've thought about that. I'd love to see more classical characters like Cinderella or uh, Belle or, you know, the you go Renaissance with like Belle, right, and Hercules and stuff like that. Or you could go classic, classic with like Cinder Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty and, um, yeah, maybe even Maleficent characters like that. Um, I know they're going to be all on top of their acquired properties, so you'll see Marvel characters you're already going to. You'll see Star Wars characters. Uh, so I think really it is a question of, which of the Disney characters do you want to see? Now, I would love to see some Disney World characters. Figment, for instance, would be a great character to have in there. Um, maybe some of the pirates from Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, what else could you do? You could do the the dad from Carousel of Progress. Stuff like that, where it's like very specific to Disney. I think that would be a lot of fun. So, uh, that's my question for you guys this week. Which characters would you like to see in Disney Infinity 2.0? Next question comes from Disney Lover 13 who says, um, have you heard that is it in fact now official that there will be Star Wars add-ins such as rides, attractions, shows added in Walt Disney World? Yep. If so, what are your thoughts? I think it's great. I'm a D Disney, uh, I'm a Disney fan, but I'm also a Star Wars fan, uh, for many years of my life since I was a child. So I love it. Second, I in fact heard that uh, officialization on my favorite podcast, WDW Radio. Since I know you love that as well, I was curious as to what your favorite segment is. Listener emails, top 10, DSI, and why. Thanks. Uh, good question. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the WDW Radio podcast. Lou Mangiello puts his podcast out every week, and he does a live news update every Wednesday. It's a lot of fun. It's where I learn a lot about Disney, and it's it was very much my way when I was, you know, a couple of years ago, first getting into it. Um, it was my way to experience a little bit of Disney World every week without having the ability to go there myself. So I enjoy it. I listen every week. I'm a big fan. As for my favorite segments, I like... The listener emails, that's ones he does with Becky Menken from Mouse Fan Travel. And those are great because you get a lot of practical uh, advice on touring the parks, which is really cool and fun to learn. I'm a big fan of his, um, I think he does his DSIs with Jim Corcus, or maybe he does that with R Ryan. Um, I, anything with Jim Corcus is great. Jim Corcus is a Walt Disney World historian. You get amazing stories. He's got a couple of books out called The Vault of Walt um, and Who's Afraid of Song of the South. Great books. Really a, a lot of rich Disney history there. So if you're a big fan of Disney, you know, beyond my videos and on my podcast, you should totally check out uh, WDW Radio. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of those. Um, great question. Let's move on to the next one. From Lewis... Speziali. Hey Rob, I know I asked a question a bit ago, but I have another one. A lot of people don't like the Sorcerer Hat in Hollywood Studios. What are your thoughts? Should it go? Ah, the Sorcerer's Hat. The infamous hat. So of course he's talking about the hat that we just saw a little moment, a little while ago, uh, in the front of Hollywood Studios. It is a very, um, polarizing subject. Some people are cool with the hat, some people hate the hat. I fall into the category of people who are not fans of the hat, though I don't think it would tread into hatred for the hat, and I don't like it for three distinct reasons. The first reason is that it blocks the uh, Chinese theater, which is the great movie ride and it was iconic, and I just don't like the idea that it, it straight up blocks it. Like. This wasn't a case where they replaced one icon with another, or they tried to put more focus on an icon. Uh, they just put it right in front of it so that when you look down uh, the boulevard, what you see is the hat. And I don't know. I don't want to say it sounds disrespectful. It sounds like there's you know respect to be had for a building, but it just seems like I dare I say lazy or you know just. Uh, clumsy, not uh, non-elegant design. So I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of number two, the fact that the hat functions as a gift shop. Like Spaceship Earth, great iconic image. You've got an attraction in it that is a perfect sort of representation of what future world's supposed to be. The Tree of Life has an attraction under it. It's beautifully designed, and at th the most, it's just a tree sitting on top of this attraction. Um, 
Cinderella's castle has a restaurant in it, has a suite in it. Uh, you could walk through that's got all this stuff going on. And then you look at the hat and it's like, okay, the hat looks cool, but it's just, it's a gift shop. It's just so representative of like what Disney gets mocked or, or criticized for, which is like the over um, focus on consumerism. Like it's a gift shop. There's so many gift shops in the parks. Why does the icon of the park need to be a gift shop? Uh, it would be cool if they turned it into something else. Although I know like they'll occasionally do that. They'll set up a stage in front for things like Star Wars weekends, but something permanently different would be great in my opinion. The third reason I'm not a fan of it is because it is very, uh, it signifies Disney film, right? You've got the hat and it's very much Fantasia related because it's the hat he wore in Fantasia. Um, what I really liked about the Chinese theater behind it was that it was about film in general, and that's sort of what the parks were about. They were about film in general. You've got Twilight Zone, you've got Aerosmith, which I guess isn't isn't really a film, but it's, you know, Hollywood, right? Uh, and Star Wars, and the great movie ride, and you just have all of these, these attractions, Indiana Jones, that are not Disney-related. And that was great because it was just about entertainment and Hollywood and that whole thing as a complete whole. And now you take this icon, which was, you know, previously about film as a whole, and now it's just about Disney film. And I don't know, I feel like it doesn't fit as well. I, w I don't mind making a new uh, icon that isn't the, the Chinese theater. And I know there are talks as to why they can't do that, but it would have been cool to see something a little different. Uh, next question comes from Alan MGM who has a pretty long question. We're gonna shrink it. Uh, I think the real question is, which would be your idea for a new Disney on Broadway musical? His would be Pocahontas and Hercules. Hercules would have been mine, so you stole my answer. <laughs> um, Frozen, but there's also already plans for it uh, because it had great scores. Ah, uh -huh, that's a good question. You know what mine would be? Oh, ooh, you know what mine would be, I think? Here's the thing. So you think Disney on Broadway and your first guest is animated, right? It makes sense. Beauty and the Beast and uh, you're saying Pocahontas and Frozen and all that stuff and Aladdin just hit Broadway. Um, but what about Disney films that aren't animated and aren't musicals before they hit Broadway? You know, we've, we've seen this. Um, I mean, Newsies, okay, Newsies was a live action, and that was a musical before it hit Broadway. Um, but outside of Disney, like, they turned Legally Blonde into a, a Broadway show. They turned Spider-Man into a Broadway show. Here's what I would love to see as a Broadway show on Broadway, The Parent Trap. It's one of my favorite um, Disney films, the original Parent Trap uh, with Haley Mills, not the one with um, What's-Her-Face. I, I honestly, honest to goodness, could not remember her name right now, and I'm actually kind of pleased for that, uh, but not with that one. Oh, Lindsay Lohan. Ugh, ruined it. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be cool. It's got some songs, and it. it's just got like Let's Get Together. That's sort of like the famous song, but I think it'd be cool to turn into like a Broadway musical and bring it back and sort of do that story. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Chris Roke asks, have you ever had a scary experience at Disney World or scary experience related to Disney? Yes, I have, Chris. Time to sit around the fireplace and hear the story of what we're going to call Lil Rob, or Lil Robbie, as I was as, at the time. I was Robbie. Um, I used to be deathly afraid of roller coasters, and it's only fitting we're walking to rock and roller coasters. Um, I used to be super afraid of roller coasters, and here's the thing. I never rode them. I was afraid of them as a concept, which is pretty weird as a kid to not be afraid of them from experience, but out of just, you know what they signified uh and at this point in time when i was little robbie uh there was no rock and roller coaster there was no animal kingdom what there was in terms of roller coasters at disney was um space mountain big thunder mountain I'm trying to think if there were any others nope i think those were it splash mountain if you want to consider it. that's not really a roller coaster um i would not go on big thunder because i saw it and it was scary and i wouldn't do it uh, Space Mountain, however, was covered because it was a closed indoor roller coaster. So I didn't know what was in there. And my mother told a fib to me and she goes, no, it's a really tame roller coaster. You just sort of go up to the top and then it just spirals down. It's not really that. It's not like a crazy roller coaster. You know, it just spirals. And 
me being a stupid little kid, stupid little Robbie. I believe that. <laughs> and so I went on Space Mountain, and of course I was on, and before it was too late, it was like an actual roller coaster. And I don't think I loved it the first time I rode it. I eventually came to love it and came to love all roller coasters, and it's funny, roller coasters have gotten to the point where, you know, they're not the most thrilling thing I can do. I've, I'm excited. I would love to do skydiving and stuff like that. Um, but there was a time where, like, I hated that experience, and it scared me to death. Oh, my gosh, it was so scary. But, yeah, plenty of, like, scary, you know, I was a scaredy cat little kid. I never rode on uh, extraterrestrial alien encounter. It was around when I was around. But I never wrote it because it was so terrifying from the previews and I did not want to be scared. Um, what was the other one that really creeped me out and scared me? Mm, I think that was it. Haunted Mansion never creeped me out. I don't think there was anything else. Oh, I'd always get a little tense around the alien part of Great Movie Ride. I always thought, you know, I knew that alien was coming every time and that scared me a little bit. And now look, they're all experiences I love and I enjoy them and have fond memories. So it's funny how that all changes, right? Uh, and then our last question this week comes from Adam Road, who asks, uh, I talked to someone about the college internship program. What do you know about this and what kind of experiences do you think I would have if I applied? Great question. So yeah, uh, college uh, Disney does a very famous college internship program. I haven't done it myself. Um, I have heard a lot about it. I don't know all of the exact details, and of course, that's something you'd want to go to the website for. But in general, the idea is, you know, you'd uh, work at the parks during your internship. You would live on property, I believe. I know you live in the, like, internship dorms. I don't know if they're technically on or off property. I would assume on property. Um, and then I think the idea is you'll take classes during that internship that are related to the field you're in. So the idea is, you know, the classes would be related to the field you're in, but the work you're doing at the parks isn't always necessarily going to be, especially when you consider how much of that internship level work at the parks is very, you know, basic, like food services and things like that, or, or rides. And, and, you know, unless that's sort of what you're going to school for, it's not really going to relate to, you know, I don't know, like a journalism major or something. Um, I've heard some really great things about it and some not so great things, but it really depends sort of going back to that job question as to how you approach it. Um, for one, I have heard more people than not say that it was a really fun experience, that you're gonna have a lot of fun, you're gonna meet a lot of cool people, it's gonna be really cool. Uh, it is not the kind of internship where you're gonna earn a living, you know, the cost, you get paid very little, and most of that goes into paying for your boarding and food and stuff like that. So you don't go to that internship sort of to earn money. You go for that experience. Um, I've heard from so many people that having Disney on your resume when you walk away from that is a very valuable thing to have. You know, Disney is a company that is famous, world famous for their... Um, you know, level of service and quality of service. So to have that on there is, it is a very important thing to have, especially if you're going to get into something like hospitality uh, or, you know, anything vacation related. Uh, so that's always good to have. Uh, and then, yeah, you have some fun at the parks. I mean, I know like if you're coming from abroad, they'll usually just shoehorn you into whatever country pavilion. Like if you're coming from France, expect to be, you know, at the French pavilion in Epcot. Uh, but otherwise, I think you get to sort of pick as long as it's available. It, I would suggest it if I, you know, I went to school for film. And so I was very focused on my film career at that time. So I ended up not going with it because it just didn't seem like something that would help my career out. Uh, but uh if I could go back today and, and give it a shot and try it, yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun to do. You know, if anything, it's a great experience at a young age to see if it's the sort of thing that you like, especially like if you're asking me this, that means you're a Disney fan, right? This isn't something where like you're just a student looking for opportunities. You're a Disney fan looking for something that's related to something you love dearly. And this is a great way to see if one, uh, seeing how the sausage is made will ruin the magic for you. Uh, but two, it's just a great way to get some, you know, more personalized experience with a company that you've grown to love or grew up with. So really cool experience. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for the questions this week. Sorry if it seemed a little weird. There's a lot of server issues due to all of this popularity with Ant Venom's video. So there are a lot of disconnects and reconnects and, and a little bit of lag. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, if you have a question that you want answered, all you have to do is leave it in the comments below. Uh, I try to get to as many of them as possible, even if I can't get to them. Is there, like, smoke coming out of 
the ground. Oh my gosh, it's so hot down here in Florida. Um, I try to get to all of them. If I can't get to them in the series, I try to get to them in the comments themselves. Uh, if you want to follow me on the social networks, I'm Rob Plays at Twitter, and I'm Rob Plays at Game on Facebook and Instagram. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Have a great week. Whatever you're doing, make the most of it, especially if we're talking about going back to school, jobs, or internship programs. Uh, have a great week, and I will see you next time for the next episode of the Minecraft Disney Q&A. Bye, everybody.